In today's video, I explain why I won't be drinking coffee in 2020. Roll the titles. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Before I jump into the video, just a quick reminder that I'm now offering the SIBO, organic acid, stool tests and consult via my website. So if you have any health or digestive issues, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. So the reality of it is that coffee is both incredibly healthy for some people and for others it severely hinders their health. So in answering the question of whether coffee is actually healthy for you or not is not so straightforward and ironically for many on standard western type diets coffee is actually one of their main sources of antioxidants. So there are many different studies that show coffee is good for gut permeability, reducing diabetes risks and even lowering your risk for developing certain types of cancers. Other studies have even showed that it can increase mood and also speed up a person's metabolism. On the other side of the coin, coffee can be extremely addictive. It can interfere with your stress hormone levels, making you feel fatigued and anxious. And for many people, they have a mass over-reliance of coffee in their daily lives. So with this in mind, it can be difficult for people to know whether coffee is actually good or bad for them. So specifically about coffee, the first thing that I want to say is that the question shouldn't be whether coffee is good or bad for you, but more can your body actually tolerate coffee? Because ultimately for a lot of people, it's their genetics that determine whether or not they respond well to coffee. For me, I could never tolerate coffee. I was always jittery and wired. For others though, they can drink coffee throughout the day and have absolutely no problems and it does nothing to impede their energy levels. Now, if you have adrenal issues, fatigue issues or thyroid problems, would I say these people should consume coffee? Well, my answer would be no until they have fixed all of these underlying issues because the coffee is probably compounding their health issues. For others, they may have cytochrome P450 enzyme deficiencies, which 10 to 15% of most populations have. This would then make it very difficult to metabolize the coffee correctly, which would then cause a whole host of sensitivity issues such as anxiety and even palpitations. For these and other people, coffee at higher amounts can also severely impede liver function and detoxification pathways in the body. So if we know that coffee is good for some and bad for others, how do we know which camp we fall into? And the only way we're gonna know this is by listening to your body. A good way of doing this is to taper off of coffee and and then remove it from your diet for a period of four to six weeks. Clearly, if your first response to this comment is horror because you need coffee to get through your daily routine, then you probably have a problem. And if you are one of these people that has an over-reliance on coffee, then there is a big chance that you will have adrenal fatigue issues or hormone imbalances. So this is why it's good to take a break from it for a period of four to six weeks and let your batteries recharge. You can still have hot drinks, just replace coffee with herbal teas instead. But it's really important that you come off of coffee for a period of time so you can see how your body responds. Without doing this, you will never know. You may think that you don't have any problems, but then you stop drinking it, you feel incredible, and your energy levels shoot up. So just to reiterate, there is no one size fits all approach with coffee. You really have to see whether coffee is helping or hindering your health goals. If it doesn't work for you, then don't just keep it in your life because of the emotional attachment that you have to it. You will do yourself a mass disservice in the long run. Now, I also quickly want to touch upon the quality of the coffee that you are drinking and how this can add to the problem. So many coffee brands found in supermarkets today can be very acidic, and this acidity can drive those headaches, energy crashes, and also mood swings. Many common coffee brands can also have a large amount of fungus and fungal byproducts called mycotoxins. Mycotoxins are essentially a group of naturally occurring chemicals such as ochratoxins and T2 toxins that are byproducts of certain molds. So when you drink lower quality brands of coffee that contain these toxins, it can get into your body and make you feel extremely jittery and wired. So this is also something for you to bear in mind. So you may actually be okay drinking coffee, but the unwanted symptoms that you are experiencing are simply derived from the poor quality of coffee that you are drinking. So my advice is to find a good quality organic coffee brand and see if you still have problems with coffee. Now I don't drink coffee, so I can't really recommend a reliable brand, but whatever brand you do choose, you want to find out whether the manufacturer is testing for these mycotoxins, molds, and fungus. 
You also want to ensure that the coffee brand that you choose has a lower acidity. Higher acidity coffee brands can create many issues in the body, such as digestive issues, reflux problems, and even gut dysbiosis issues. Many health food stores carry brands that are low in acid and free of these toxins. They will probably be more expensive, but they will certainly be worth the investment. So that's just a quick overview of why I won't be consuming coffee in 2020 and beyond, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you should avoid it also. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed, and as always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live and I'll see you next time.